Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to talk about my work on the possibility of basing cryptography on X is not equal to BPP. And this is a joint work with Professor Rafael Paz at Cornell Tech. So today, we're going to talk about the notion of my functions, which is what proposed by Diffie and Hammer in 76. When we function is unequivocally the most central notion in cryptography. And it's well known that when a function is both necessary and sufficient for a branch of private key crypto primitives, such as private key encryption, superior generators, digital signatures, and so on. And we also know that public key encryption, oblivious transfer would imply the existence of one functions. So without one function, there is really no non-trivial computational crypto. So we really need one function to exist. However, proving the existence of one function is a very hard problem and would imply MP is not equal to P. Therefore, in the absence of a formal proof, people have just come up with those one function construction candidates, uh, which are based on different computational assumptions, including the, uh, the hardness of factoring problem, the hardness of discrete logarithm problem, and the hardness of lattice problem. However, we know that if we have quantum computers, then the factoring assumption and the discrete logarithm assumption are just broken. And so we really need to prove the existence of one function. So in this work, we ask, can we prove the existence of one function based on very weak assumptions about physical computation? And perhaps the most believable and it's embarrassing open conjecture is that X is not equal to BPP. So let us look at look into this minimal conjecture. Uh, recall that X denotes the class of action exponential time decidable languages. And we don't know that X is not equal to sub X. So even a sub exponential time algorithm cannot emulate exponential time computation. And on the other hand, BPP denotes the class of randomized polynomial time decidable languages. And it is believed that BPP is equal to P. In other words, the power of randomized polynomial time algorithms are as powerful as the deterministic polynomial time algorithm. So our unproven minimal conjecture would be X is not equal to BPP. Informally, randomness does not exponentially speed up computation. And note that it's a really weak conjecture in the sense that the, and many other assumptions would also imply it. Note that if MP is not equal to BPP, then we have X is not equal to BPP. And if BPP is equal to P, then we have X is not equal to BPP. Furthermore, even if we assume randomized polynomial time algorithm are are much more are much powerful and uh, even even if they can emulate sub exponential time computation, I will still have X is not equal to PPP. So it would be really crazy to assume that randomized randomness can speed up algorithms exponentially, and it's really an embarrassment that uh, such a conjecture has not been proven. So this is really weak conjecture. So in this work, we ask, can we base on the base the existence of one function on such a weak conjecture? So we show that uh, there exists a, a standard nature computational problem called MKGP, uh, such that this if this problem being hard on average with respect to two-sided error heuristics is equivalent to the existence of one function, and also, this same problem being hard on average with respect to errorless heuristics is equivalent to X is not equal to BPP. And as we shall see later on, this MKGP is really a standard problem related to Komogo Kampasi and has been studied since the 60s. And, and the notion of two sided error and error, errorless average case harness are the two standard notions used in complexity literatures. So therefore, the only gap between the existence of one function and X is not equal to BPP is a seemingly minor technical distinction 
distinction between two standard notions of average case hardness for a specific problem. And to introduce our main theorem, let's look at, uh, let us first introduce uh, the notion of one functions. So a function f is one way. If it's easy to compute, so f should be able to be computed in polynomial time, and f is hard to invert. So no PPT machine can invert f. Uh, informally, given the input x, it's easy to go from x to f, f of x, but it's hard to go back to x from the output f of x. And more formally, we say that f is a one-way function. If given a random string x of n bits, we let y be f of x. And uh, for any PPT algorithm A, the probability that A of input y outputs a pre-image of y is at most a negligible amount. And for standard runway functions, uh, we ask all attackers fail on all input lengths n. So here, we also consider a notion of infinitely open one-way function, where the inversion requirement is relaxed, and we ask all attackers fail on infinitely open many input lengths n. So therefore, our main theorem says that the existence of infinitely open one-way functions is equivalent to this MKT problem being hard on average with respect to two-sided error heuristics. And x is not equal to BPP if and only if MKTP is hard on average with respect to errorless heuristics. And here, MKTP is a language of pairs of k comma x comma k having the property that x have, has levin Komogo complexity at most k. And we remark here that we can also characterize standard one functions by considering an almost everywhere notion of average case hardness. And let us uh, introduce the notion of Komogo complexity. So given the following two strings, the first is like one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And the second one is one, seven, three, something, and something looks random. So the question here is that which of the above strings is more random? And the notion of Komogo complexity proposed by Komogo in, 70, uh, in 68 is used to measure the amount of randomness in a fixed string. So here for any string x, we let k of x denote the length of the shortest program that outputs x. And more formally, we fix the universal tree machine u, and we are looking for the length of the shortest program pi, which consists of m comma w, such that u on input m comma w will output the string x. And the notion of Komogo complexity has a lot of amazing applications, such as proving Godot's incompleteness theorem, but unfortunately, it is uncomputable. And we instead look at Levin's Komogo complexity, uh, which is proposed by Levin in 73. So we let kt of x to be uh, the minimal overall programs that output x of the sum of first the length of the program pi and second log the logarithm of the running time of pi. For example, if the machine pi outputs x within time two to the power of n over 10, and the length of the machine is at most n over 10, then ktx is at most uh, n over 10 plus n over 10, which is n over 5. And the intuition of doing this is that we charge for the size of the program and the running time simultaneously, but we only charge log logarithmically for running time to capture the intuition that polynomial time computations are relatively cheap. And the key observation here is that the kt of x is at most the length of x plus all of one for any string x. So just consider a true machine where on its tape, it's the, we leave the string x on its tape and the machine itself is, uh, is a machine that halts immediately. So if we run the machine, it will terminate immediately and the output the string x on its tape. And this machine takes you know, constant time so therefore, the KT complexity of X is at most uh, length of X plus all of one. And here, MKTP denotes the language, the language of pairs of X comma K, such that KT of X is at most K. So we note that this MKTP language no longer seems to be in MP. Since here, for example, this pi will output X in time two to the power of N over 10, 
and we don't know how to verify this in polynomial time. Then let's let us introduce notions of averages harness used in this work. So we first introduce the notion of two-sided error here as average case harness, and we say that the language L is in heuristic P if for all polynomial P there exists a deterministic algorithm H such that H of X equals L of X with probability one minus one over P of N over random X. And we also consider another notion of standard average case harness, uh, which called errorless average case harness. And we note that this is really a standard notion in complexity theory literature. So we say that uh, a language L is in average P if for all polynomial P, there exists a deterministic algorithm H such that for all inputs X, H of X will output either L of X, the correct answer, or bot. And second, the probability that H of X outputs bot is at most uh, one over P of N. So these two notions of heuristics that they both succeed with very high probability, namely one minus one over P of N. And the difference between these two notions is that uh, for an error, two-sided error heuristic, it's, it is unaware of any mistakes. So if H of X outputs zero, it's unclear whether L of X is also zero. However, an errorless heuristic knows it when making a mistake. So if H of X doesn't output bot, it is guaranteed that uh, L of X is equal to H of X. And in this work, we, act, we consider act, the notion of randomized heuristics and we consider the BP, BPP analog of heuristic P and average P. We have to you know, modify the definition accordingly and the difference between these two notions stays the same as we mentioned before. Okay, so we are ready to present our main theorem formally. So we first, first we show that the existence of infinite open one functions is equivalent to MKTP is not in heuristic BPP. And XB is not equal to PPP if and only if MKTP is not inside average BPP. So we show that basing one way functions on XB is not equal to PPP boils down to a seemingly minor technical problem between two standard notions of average case hardness and proving MKTP is not in average PPP, it implies MKTP is not in heuristic BPP is exactly what we need to base infinite open one function on X is not equal to BPP. So when we wonder, okay, what are the consequences of this implication? So the next theorem tells us that uh, if we can show MKTP is not in average BPP, implies MKTP is not in heuristic BPP, then we prove MP is, equal to, is not equal to P. And there are two ways to interpret this theorem. And the pessimistic interpretation would be that closing this minor gap will be very hard. And on the other hand, the optimistic interpretation would be that this is a new algorithmic approach towards proving MP is not equal to P. And so to prove this implication, it suffice to decide the language uh, MKTP errorlessly on average, having uh, access to a two-sided error heuristic that deciding that decides the same language. So if we can come up with such an algorithm, then we prove MP is not equal to P. And also in the paper, we have showed some other characterizations of binary functions with additional properties. Uh, for instance, the computability, com, uh, com, computability in log space or unified NC0 using different other notions of resource bounded comorbid capacity. And we won't focus on these results in this talk and we refer uh, you to the paper for more details. And let us mention some related work here. A Allen et al shows the X completeness of MKTP with respect to P slash poly reductions. They show that if X is not inside P slash poly, then MKTP is not inside P slash poly. And this will be our start point, starting point for our theorem two. And Liu and past 20 shows that 
the existence of one function is equivalent to the average case hardness of time bounded comorbid capacity. And this problem is another comorbid capacity style problem. And it is not known that uh, this problem is X complete. However, uh, what we show today, this MKTP is X complete. And this will be our starting point for our theorem one. Concurrently and independently, then Anderson Turner also shows an equivalence between Y functions and mild average case hardness of MKTP. And more recently, Leo and Pass 2021 shows that Y functions is equivalent to average case hardness of conditional time bounded comorbid complexity problem. And they also show that this problem is MP complete. Taking together, Y functions, y functions can now be characterized through average case hardness of X, X complete languages, this work, and an MP complete languages, LP21. So let us look into our proof. So let's first present the proof for theorem one, uh, which states infinity of y functions exist if and only if MKTP is not in a heuristic BPP. So let's first look at uh, the proof for the first direction. And we want to show that uh, if MKTP is not in that heuristic BPP, then infinity of y functions exist. And one may wonder, okay, why we only obtain infinite open wire functions? Uh, it's because the assumption MKTP is not in aggressive BPP is only an infinite notion of average case hardness. And if we start with an almost everywhere notion of hardness, that is MKTP is not in infinite open heuristic BPP, then we will obtain standard wire functions. So we want to show that uh, wire functions exist assuming MKTP is not inside uh, heuristic BPP. And uh, it's well known that uh, it's sufficient to show that a weak infinite open y function exists, which is a efficiently computable function f such that no PPT machine can invert f with probability one minus one over p of n for all n and some polynomial p. And by the famous, and the famous yes, hardness amplification lemma says that if a weak infinite open wire functions exist, then a infinite open wire function exists. So we just need to construct a weak wire function. And let us show some intuitions for how to construct a weak wire function, assuming the average case hardness of MKTP. And we will ignore many important steps uh, in this proof, which makes the proof really complicated. I, so our idea here is to just highlight the central idea. So let's look at our construction. Uh, we first let's see be the constant such that uh, MKT of X is at most length L of X plus C for all string X. And as mentioned before, KT of X is at most uh, length of X plus O of one. And here C is just uh, the O of one. And we define a function F on inputs pi prime comma L where pi prime is an n plus cp string and l is a log n plus cp string as follows. So the first step is let pi be the first l bits of pi prime. So we truncate the machine pi prime to the first l bits. And then we let, we basically interpret this pi as a machine and we let x be the output of pi and we let t be the running time of the machine. And finally, the function f will simply output l plus log t comma x. And to give some intuition, let's assume for simplicity that uh, we can invert the function f with probability one. And then we can easily decide MKTP and how. On input k x comma k, we just check whether they, there exists a k prime smaller than k such that the inversion succeeds on k prime comma x. And if the inversion succeeds, then we know that there exists a machine pi of length L that outputs X within uh, T steps, uh, such that uh, L plus log T equals K prime. And we, can, and we know that we should output yes on this instance. So therefore, this, this function seems to be weakly one way. Uh, however, the issue here is that F requires exponential time to run. As mentioned before, it's possible that the program that witnesses the KT complexity of X takes exponential time. 
So namely here, we want to compute the output of pi. It may require exponential time. So the solution here is to cut off the machine's running time after polynomially many steps. So here we let x be the output of pi after n to the c steps. And if pi does not halt after n to the c steps, we simply output bots. And to see why this solution works, uh, let's first uh, define some notions. Uh, we say that the program pi is a KT witness for the string x if pi generates x in t steps while minimizing the length of pi plus log t among all other programs. And our key observation is that for any epsilon from 0 to 1, except for, for an epsilon fraction of MB string x, x has KT witness pi with running time at most of 1 to over epsilon. So most strings has, have a KT witness that has a small running time. And to see why this observation helps, just pick epsilon to be 1 over n to the c. And we, we know that except for n, 1 over n to the c fraction of mb string x, and x has kt witness pi with running time at most n to the c. So therefore, we can just cut off the running machine's running time. And so why this observation is true, uh, let's see how we prove it. Recall that for any string x, uh, we have kt of x is at most the length of x plus of one. So for any string x with k kt witness pi that runs at most uh, uh, larger than one over epsilon steps, it satisfies that uh, the length of pi plus log one over epsilon is at most kt of x, which is at most uh, length of x plus of one. So therefore, the length of pi is at most uh, m plus of one plus log epsilon. And note that epsilon here is something smaller than one. So this concludes that uh, there are at most uh, epsilon times two to the n such programs pi, which concludes our observation. And in the paper, we will use this observation to, so to show that f is indeed a weak one function. And the proof will be much more complicated, especially when dealing with the fact that uh, we can, the inverter only inverts with probability one, one minus one over P of N instead of one. And, but we can leverage from our previous work LP20 to overcome this barrier. So we have seen the proof. Then, then next, let us talk about the proof for the other direction. So we assume infinity open one functions exist. Then MKTP is not, inside the hierarchy PPP. So our higher level idea is as follow. First, we use the value function f to construct a so-called entropy, conditionally entropy preserving PRG. And a, a count AP PRG is a PRG that has high channel entropy conditioned on some event E. And we, we can use the MKTP here, heuristic H to distinguish the output of PRG from random, which is a contradiction. So our uniform string, we know that uniform string has high commodal capacity. And on pseudo-random string, we know that uh, pseudo-random strings have small commodal capacity in the sense that uh, to output the string y, we only need to hardwire the seeds of length n and the program of, of PRG, which costs uh, constant bits. And the running time of PRG is polynomial. And therefore, uh, the kt capacity of y is at most uh, n plus all of log n. And we remark here that G has to have high entropy to ensure that the Oracle works on pseudo-random strings. So we have seen the proof for theorem one and let's move on to proof for theorem two. And we want to show that the X is not equal to BPP if and only if MKTP is not inside average BPP. And the trivial direction uh, is easy to see. Now let us focus on the non-trivial direction. Uh, which says that x is not equal to PPP implies MKTP is not in average PPP. And this is a non-constructive proof. And uh, our proof out outline is uh, the follow. So we first use uh, the results in Ampega, in Picasso and the Winderson 98 to show that if x is not equal to BPP, then there exists an inefficient infinity-often PRGG. 
And then we prove that uh, if an efficient IOPRGG exists, then MKTP is not an average GPP. So the way we prove this lemma four is similar to, to how this, this second direction of the zero one was proven, proved, proved. But since this PRG is not entry preserving, we can only get the errorless average case hardness. So we have, so in conclusion, today we have seen that uh, the existence of infinitely open wire functions is equivalent to MKTP being a harder on average with respect to two sided error heuristics. And X is not equal to PPP, it's equivalent to MKTP being average case hardness with, with respect to errorless heuristic. So the only gap of basing for basing infinity open one functions on X is not equal to PPP is a seemingly minor technical problem uh, between two standard notions of average case hardness with respect to this MKTP problem, which has been studied since the 70s. However, proving these implications would show that uh, MP is not equal to P. And this gives us a new algorithmic approach towards proving MP is not equal to P. So we just need to solve MKTP errorlessly on average, having the access to a two-sided error heuristic. And thank you for your listening.